Coming up, the singer and guitarist from an 80s rock band tell us the story of uh, one of the most memorable sing-along songs of the entire 80s, except that uh, it wasn't a hit. Shockingly, it only went to number 49. We find out why that was and the song's inspiration next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you can remember the lyrics to all the classic songs of the 70s and 80s, but you can't remember why you walked into the next room, you're going to love this channel. Make sure that you subscribe below right now to get some of the most unique stories of classic rock and pop from those who were actually there, those who created the music. And if you click right up here, you can see our brand new merch. That really helps us to curate this channel, do more videos, more interviews, so please support us there. Uh, it includes our Vintage Years collection. And we also have a Patreon where you can see even more content and be an honorary producer that helps our mission of curating uh, this history as well. Uh, that link is below. Uh, there are certain songs that uh, we've all heard since we were children that have reached the, the pinnacle of rock and pop. Songs that we all know and sing along to, you know, whenever they come on the radio or, or wherever, and they're stuck in our head for days after, and you don't even mind because they're so great. What I Like About You by The Romantics is definitely one of those kind of classics. That's what I like about you. That's what I like it may surprise you to know What I Like About You was not a hit. I mean, you just assumed it was a, a number one smash or a top 10 because of how popular it was and still is. And everybody knows it. But it only went to number 49 on the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, we just talked uh, about this a few weeks ago. American Girl by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. She was an American girl. That also wasn't a hit. Both head scratchers for sure. What I Like About You was uh, released by the American band The Romantics. That was back in 1980. It was written by original band members uh, Wally Palmer, who sang and played rhythm guitar uh, and harmonica. That's Mike Skill, the lead guitarist, and uh, drummer-singer Jimmy Perinos, who sang lead on that particular track. Now, The Romantics were formed in Detroit, Michigan in 1977. Uh, they were a power pop band, considered that with influences ranging from early 50s American rock There was MC5 The Stooges Motown Early Bob Seger And garage rock. Known for their high energy live shows and their iconic look, you know, that included red leather suits and also black vinyl. Kind of a tip of the hat to the Motown artists like the Temptations and the Four Tops that influenced them. Uh, actually, the band's first show was at My Fair Lady Club. It was a Detroit spot opening for the new MC5. That was in 77, actually on Valentine's Day. The band were road warriors at first. They were playing venues all over the East Coast and the Midwest. And then they were signed to Nat Weiss's Nemperer label and they recorded their self-titled debut. That was in 79. That was produced by Pete Soley. He was once a member of Procol Harem. And uh, Whitesnake, actually. And he later produced records for Oingo Boingo and Motorhead, amongst a few others. Actually, the Romantics' true record debut was uh, about a year before 1978, Little White Lies. No little white lies. That was for Spider Records, followed by the Bomp single, Tell It to Carry. Both of those were re-recorded for their debut album. Anyway, the first album sold about 200,000 copies, uh, driven by radio play and the concert staple, What I Like About You. 
Uh, they've been playing that song in their set for a while. Uh, you know, the song's, uh, Hey. That refrain was actually influenced by the Yardbirds' One Under Sideways Down. As well as Chuck Berry's song Back in the USA. The iconic riff uh, on the song is very familiar in rock music, both before and after the song was released. Uh, other songs that have that similar sound, Neil Diamond's Cherry Cherry. The Standells hit Sometimes Good Guys Don't Wear White. Joe Jackson's song, I'm the Man. And uh, John Mellencamp's Diddy, R-O-C-K in the USA. Again, such a head scratcher when uh, What I Like About You only got to the top 50 but it would make a comeback years later. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. And of course the band would have uh, the, the new wave-ish top three hit uh, a few years later with Talking In Your Sleep. Now I had the opportunity to sit down with the romantic singer Wally Palmer and guitarist Mike Skill. I uh, talk about forming the band and uh, what I like about you and how it finally got the credit it deserved and uh, it's in depth on this song is we go into this interview. I do wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I jam every single day. You know, one of the best things about Zenny, these glasses that uh, when you go to zenny.com, you can customize your eyewear with a prescription lens or non-prescription lens you can get sunglasses, whatever. If you just want the cool look or a certain color, a particular style of lens, you can do that. Check it out today at zenny.com. Here's Wally and Mike. Well, one of the great, probably one of the greatest wonders of the world for pop music is what I like about you. How the heck that wasn't a song that went straight to number one when it came out. What I like about you. Because that, since, there have been probably 70% of the number ones that have been are not as big as that. So what was on radio is what kept it from doing it because it was uh, Saturday Night Fever. John Travolta, Saturday Night Fever. I remember when I first heard the guitar, man. Yeah. And then you're the, hey, it's like, it just shakes you up. Hey! When you guys put that song together, you guys wrote it, tell mm -hmm. me, Tell me about that process. Much different with any other song. It's yeah. just that you kind of uh, don't think and you kind of just play and feel. And then you take it to your rehearsal studio and it went like that. The drummer was there, I was there, and it became something at that spot. These guys came in and we all, we all kind of, it, it's that soup, that ingredients. Uh, I wanted always, was, he knows it too, we always stick like that three chord thing, the three chord thing, simplicity and thinking we're going to have to have a good chorus and That's what I like about you. What I like about you. it's really keep that up front i mean mc5 had their single out in 67 <laughs> looking at you came out and it was like the who yardbirds and james brown because they were like a soul they were tight And that's a, the next step from that. To me, in yeah. my heart, is what I like about you coming from that energy from what- Over, you know, under, you. sideways, down. Yeah, kind of a cousin yeah. to that song. Yeah. Hey. Cousin to Cherry Cherry. And then with his guitar and his harp on it. You know what's interesting? I, too bad we didn't have a way to give you, uh, there's footage of us playing at a small club in Detroit yeah with us doing what I like about you after we had just come up with the idea and it's in, and you can see the difference from us from that footage right there how it evolved eventually till the time we went in in to record the first album the lead vocal was uh, phrased differently 
and this was uh, this was here, that was there, a little bass solo before the harmonica, you know, a little bass line coming there before the harp blows and stuff. So it's from Fred Smith's it, band. Yeah, it evolved. Right it evolved, you know, quite a bit. Well, that harmonica. Oh my gosh, I love well, that. Yeah, the verse. Jimmy was singing the uh, uh, singing the verse on the other side instead of on the beat that he's on. He was on the other side. And it had a bass solo that we had been jamming with. Uh, we played with Sonic Rendezvous Band. Uh, or they were we had seen Sonic Rendezvous, and he always had that bass coming in in the middle. You know, so by the time we went into the studio to record the first album. The producer Pete Sala, uh, you know, he came in and we worked on all the songs on the album, plus some. And he kind of streamlined. He said, "We don't really need the bass solo at that point. Let's just hit it hard. Let's do a hey and then go right to the harp solo." And that, and little other things, hand claps here and there, and. whatever and the simplicity of a of the song and the you know two the two guitars working together mm -hmm. you know and the flowing bass line it's such worked. a great sing-along too i mean yeah, your kids yeah, hear it first time my kids heard it it was exactly like the first time i heard it they were singing along by the midway into the song they knew the song because it's got that great Sing along, and then also, I guarantee you, John Mellencamp had to have heard that song because oh, no, we played. We played you don't USA. understand. We played a show in Detroit, and we had the red leather suits. And he's still, he was still like a metalish kind of band. Metal. Johnny Cougar, kind of, he was still metal. And uh, we came on, and we were like, "What is this?" You know, red suits. As we, our guitars were. Clear ringing guitars, hey, uh huh. And the next thing you know, months later, his guitars completely were ringing the next album. He took the heart part. Totally. And it's cool because songs influence sure. other songs and they just bring the whole world together. I love that. We took that. it as a compliment. When it didn't hit, when I went to number 49, where I always want to ask you guys this. Were you frustrated? Because to me, that's like a no-brainer. Like, how is that song not a huge... I mean, it's huge. I was, just, I was just, put the next one out. Here, I put the next thing out. You gotta, the next was just as you got to understand that us, you know, growing up on top of all that stuff, watching TV in, in Detroit, we used to watch American Bandstand. England, right? No. From Detroit. So, when what I like about you comes out, we're on American Bandstand, that for myself, and I'm sure for Mike, for all of us, we saw you know the footage of it later on, that wow, we're actually on that show. The Romantics. Send the Jimmy, come on down here, I'll let you do the introductory tour. But there with Dick Clark, I said, it was great, are you kidding me? It's fantastic. Yeah. We had local, there were local TV shows, Swinging Time it was a guy out of Canada. He had the Bugs on there, he had the MC5 was on there. The Time, the local group, The Time. All the uh, Bob Seger was on there in the early days when he was writing protest songs. Yeah, that was our that was our bread, meat and potatoes uh, show. Well, like you said though, down the road the song maybe you know cracked the top forty or whatever, you know. But longevity though, look how big the song is. Now yeah. it's bigger now than what and it, it, it was. And it was on it MTV out. all the time because it was in regular rotation because yeah. you guys had the music video for it. And it came out like, you know, yeah. 81 when MTV hit, but also in the commercials. I remember seeing on Saturday morning TV when I was yeah. a kid and saying, oh, this is a song I love. And then it just grew from there in the 90s and it just grew a life of its own, you yeah, know? Absolutely. You to, and it's still going. You have to give credit where credit's due. The original drummer I worked with from high school and his, his kick drum was my rhythm, was the same groove. And we, it was a connection. There was a connection in all the writing. I mean, you still got that. I mean, you know, now you're growing up, you don't have to. So was it something when you were playing it, you started going, hey, and then, uh-huh. Like the, when we started, I did a haze. I started doing some haze, and uh -huh has comes from, like, the old rock and roll stuff. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking Latin Upe Lou. Over 
arms are sideways down. That stuff. And Definitely. We're all throwing stuff around, and it's just like magic's happening. But. And Michael Morales covers it. Been on how many movies? Yeah. Freaky Friday countless, and countless Thirteen Going on Thirty, and, yeah. and Five Seconds of Summer cover it. Yeah. Yeah. When the punk band Suicide Machines, when they covered it, From I love that because right. it had that punk energy. I mean, the song has that punk energy to it, right? And so it seemed like appropriate that that would be the case. Also, Shrek 2, that was well, cool. You can't stop something with it. Certain vibes, certain energy. It's yeah. not like we're pushing it. We did, That's another thing. Uh, the song goes up, it was coming up the charts. Then it slowed down and stopped. And there was no, there was no knack hype for like from capital, millions of dollars to push it up. There was none of that happened. It just started sitting down. And then MTV came along and Bud Light came along. And then MTV kicked it over the top. That's a phenomenal yeah. song. And it's just something that, and you guys know this because yeah. you play it all over the world. The second that they hear that riff, everybody's singing it, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> and it's also uh, at sporting events and stuff. They go to a timeout or a commercial break and they throw it on. Uh -huh. what I like about you. Poison so covered it too. Who are you hoping to there's nothing else like it on radio. I mean, there's no video that was like it at the time. It's a song that 500 years from now they'll still be hearing it. And that's yeah. cool to know that you guys yeah. wrote a song like that. Hey. I always loved the band named The Romantics. I was surprised that nobody snagged it before them. So the answer to the question, why wasn't what I like about you a bigger hit when it came out? It definitely wasn't being promoted by the label and stations weren't adding it to their playlists. Um, the way it became a hit was at the end of the 80s when the song was licensed for use in an ad campaign for Budweiser Beer. It won't fill you up, it never lets you down. What I Like About You grew to become, uh, from there, one of the most popular rock anthems of all time. We hear it all the time. Leave us a comment about this amazing song and about the romantics. What are your memories of this group, of this song? Uh, what other songs did you think were hits, like number one hits, and you were later surprised to find out that they weren't at all, or maybe they're just a top 40 hit? Let us know in the comments. If you dig our content, our videos, make sure that you subscribe below to support this channel uh, so you never miss out on our content. Make sure to look us up on Patreon and to check out our merch. That really helps us to keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.